Welcome to the Sacred and the Profane podcast. I'm your host, Shannon McNally. We will be speaking with elders, musical luminaries, medicine people, and session players about everyday magic and the past, present, and future of heartfelt and soulful real music. Hi, everybody. This is Shannon McNally, and I have the great pleasure of talking with Sean Colvin today. And uh, we're talking about um, being an artist and uh, Waylon Jennings and how those two things in this particular juncture are coming to the same point. Um, but Sean, thank you very much for joining me. How are you? Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm all right. How are you? I'm doing pretty good, all things considered. Good, all good. Things considered. Yeah, I've really enjoyed this project because it sort of, it, it, it takes me out of, uh, you know, these crazy times and sort of lets me float up above it a little bit here and there. Yeah, well, it's a great project, Sharon. Thank you. I appreciate that. One of the reasons I, you know, I've done this record was, uh, aside from thinking Wayland's pretty, pretty cool, um, <laughs> I never heard a woman do any of it, and yeah. I never really thought about it until I, I sort of thought about it a little bit in passing, but not much, until I stood at the mic, and then I was like, wait a minute, this is kind of, this is a little daunting. You know, part of the reason um, that it was daunting is because he's pretty more archetypal male, you know, very 20th century archetypal male. And yeah. For those of us who remember the 20th century, um, that, that, that was a thing, you know, there was sort of a difference between the, the, met, the, thing, the things that kept us apart. There were just these norms and rules or unspoken rules, unspoken norms. Nor did a man really ever kind of take on any women's tunes, you know, that rarely happened. Right, right. And, um, and still and doesn't happen, really. It still very often. doesn't happen much, does it? Mm -hmm. You know, the other thing about, you know, when you talk on Waylon, he's also sort of this prototype outlaw, you know, this yeah. country music outlaw. Does that term mean anything? I mean, does that term mean anything to you? Well, I, I've been thinking about that. Um, you, you, I think you mentioned something to me about, do I think I'm an outlaw? Yeah. You know? Yeah, and, I see I mean, you. I see you kind of as one. So I'm still. You mentioned on that. And that's, <laughs> that's interesting to me. I mean, in the context of Waylon, um, I'm thinking outlaw in terms of music and artistry. You know, it personally, yes, I I think I'm an outlaw, but not, but musically, um, I guess I never really thought of myself that way um right. personally for a lot of different reasons in my family and just wow. the way i am i think of myself as sort of a uh a shit disturber a little bit you know? <laughs> shit stir <laughs> shit stir yeah, that makes and um, i didn't want to do what they wanted me to do you know and i didn't do it you're from uh, south dakota i'm from south dakota what kind of community? yeah marky huh <laughs> oh yeah you got that great you can do that whole Fargo thing, huh? Oh, yeah. yeah. How, um, what kind of community did you grow up in? Oh, uh, I lived in a town of 6,000 people. That's where I was born. Um, we did have a university, but a very small community. Could walk everywhere. Uh, went to church every Sunday. Right. That's part of being an um, outlaw. You have to go to church. Initially. You have to go to church, then you have to rebel against it, then you have to go back and say, you know, that church going made me everything I am today. Um, and, you know, all white people and um, just a very small community. And I was kind of a, a, a misfit then. And um, my world was music and my best friend's world was music. And right. Uh, we were churchgoers together. Her father was the organist and the choir director at the church. Right. And there was a junior choir. And then the Beatles came along. And pr prior to that, uh, it was my father's record collection, which was mostly the Kingston Trio uh -huh. and Pete Seeger. So those were the records I listened to. That's, that's a, I mean, that's a pretty strong foundation in, in American folk music. I mean. Yes, and church music, you know, there was a lot of great church music. Um, uh, that, you know, especially, um, learning to sight sing and all the different harmonies and parts and, yeah. and church music, that was really cool. So 
you didn't really think you think of yourself as an outlaw, sort of as as a, as a personality, you know, in, in your in your uh, in your upbringing setting, which I think is yeah. a lot of musicians, you know, uh, we we kind of growing up at some point we go. One of these things is not like the other. The other. So. Well, you saw, sometimes in, a, in, a, in an upbringing like mine, in a community like mine, you didn't make a living with music. Oh, it was I like, didn't, yeah. yeah. I didn't know anybody who ever been a professional musician. Oh, before. no, 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 no. I didn't no. even know it was a th I didn't, I had no idea how to do it. So <laughs> yeah, in that way, I mean, I think we're rebels. I think we're all kind of rebels. Right. You know, oh, to yeah. a certain extent, so that, yeah. which is outlaw-esque, you know? same similar thing musically yes uh no i've 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 never felt that that way no and um it's just what it's what makes your project special among other things is that you are turning a predominantly predominantly outlaw oriented or or labeled artist man male because that's Oh yeah. Oh yeah. What, that's what the connotation is oh, yeah. and bringing, you know, and, and sort of pushing that aside and bringing out the actual artistry. Waylon was an amazing singer, amazing arranger. His, he, his, his personality um, and just the singing. I mean, that's one thing I really marvel at. The guy just could, could, could do anything really chose great songs and um, just not a blowhard chest beater. It's not really what the music right. reflects. No, you know? you're right. And it's funny, it, that's to me, it's like bingo. It's like, you know, I see he, all these, these men that came after, these artists that came after him and they picked up on this one element of him. Um, but one of the things that I've noticed about Whale, just through going through this project, was he was surrounded by really cool women, really strong, like, you know, I mean, he's married to Jesse Coulter, who's just, yeah. you know, spitfire. And, you know, as far as you being an outlaw musically, um, what do you think musically, what does that, what does that mean to you? When I first, when like my first record came out and they were labeling me and, and, and it was, the thing I was taking umbrage with was the folk music moniker. I didn't like that. I shouldn't have bothered. It was just dumb. Well, the way, you know, now I'm proud to, I mean, it's like, fine, I'm a folk musician. That's, that's fine. I just thought, you know, you too is more folk musician than I am in terms of the, the call to action and the, you know, political and um, that was kind of how I was feeling, but I kind of got in trouble for it, you know, from other acoustic uh, oriented artists and um, right. it just, so, so did Bob Dylan. So you were in really good company. Yeah, right. I mean, they yelled at Bob Dylan. They were mad at Bob Dylan for 25 years. So I think I was just young and pushing against a label. But there, the essence of what I'm, you know, what the pushback was for me was like, I'm tougher than you think. So maybe I sensed a bit of outlaw-ishness. But women, what women were outlaws? And I was thinking about that. You know, because that's not what we associate that music, that term with, no. No. the outlaw music term. It's guys. Sister Rosetta Tharp, there's an outlaw, you know? Yeah. So I just wanted to bring her up, you know, as I was a woman in, her, in the 30s and 40s who played the shit out of the electric guitar, rock and roll. She wasn't just blues. No. Um, she was a rock and roller yep. and black. Yep. And... A force you know, to be reckoned with, yeah. A force to be reckoned with. And I always think of Chrissy Hind as a little bit of an outlaw, maybe more than a little bit. I, I, would, I would agree. Yeah, she's somebody you can imagine, and maybe she did spitting, you know, on stage. <laughs> it's like, do it. Um, so I was just trying to think about, uh, um, and I'm sure there are, uh, you know, uh, so many women who truly are outlaws, but we just don't think of the two. You know what that makes me think of them? What? Loretta Lynn was an outlaw. Ooh, she the had a pill, right in the, you know, the pill and don't come home and drinking with Levin on your mind. You ain't woman enough to take my man. And she was fierce. Yeah, you know, 
Oh, oh, for sure. No, you're the reason our kids are ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Loretta, yeah, she, Loretta wrote she didn't some stuff. words. No, and I think not mincing words. I think that is like really where it comes down to. I think that's, yeah. um, you just hit it on the head. I, think. I mean, Dolly Parton is the same way. You know, that's Do true. Dolly has such an incredibly, she, she, she's, she's so Southern in this way. I know she's from Appalachia, but she's still so like, she can tell you these really nice truths, but she does it with a smile and a glass of sweet lemonade. And, but she, yeah, yeah. You that, but she, you know, I mean, she was the same way, you know, she didn't mince words. She didn't just, mince words. She so just, we think of those women as, what do we think of them as? You know, not outlaws. We, that's not the term we use. Well, they certainly hung with outlaws and they liked outlaws. And outlaws liked them, true. you know? So it must have been outlaws. You know, I think I, they might, well, that's what, again, we just come circling back to your project, which is it's turning things on, turning it, turning the term on its ear a bit by you doing these songs. And I've done a lot of cover songs by guys. Yes, I um, want to talk to you about that. Um, you know, yeah. um, how, do you, how do you pick a song, you know, like that you didn't write? Well, I, I made my living doing cover songs for many, many, many years. And, and so I would choose anything that I loved. And early on in my career, I did nothing but Joni Mitchell songs. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it wasn't as though I was trying, I was imitating. I was, you know, I was being the biggest copycat in the world. Joni, Bonnie, um, you know, uh, a whole, whole bunch of girls. So then I started sort of changing up the covers and trying to get more interesting. Right. And, and, and what interesting meant to a certain extent was covering songs by men that you wouldn't expect me wouldn't expect a, a woman acoustic guitar player to do. Um, from like Acadian Driftwood by the band. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, then I did um, oh, some Tom Waits stuff, you know, Heart of Saturday Night and um, nothing too crazy. Speaking of crazy though, then I like, I did a cover of the Gnarls Barkley song, Crazy. If the words speak to me, then I say, all bets are off, slow it down, make it pretty. If you want, do it. Because yeah. the words, the words, right. the lyrics. You know, you're such a great songwriter and such a powerful lyricist. So I think that, you know, and you come from the, you know, having a, a firm sort of folk tradition in your childhood, you know, brain. Yeah. Um, that, I struggle a little bit with, you know, differentiating the importance between a, a, a song I didn't write and a song I did write. Like, right. I know, I know it matters to the rest of the world and somehow it's become this thing where like, it's just not as good or it's not as authentic or it's not as important if you didn't write it. And I understand what you're saying about doing someone else's song, especially the sort of, choosing someone like Waylon, you know, Shannon McNally choosing Waylon Jennings. And I understand, you know, there is this distance that people will perceive and, and you taking those songs by this outlaw tough guy and, and the shifts that would go on as you learned them and sang them and, um, you know, in you, right. how, whatever they were, because, that's it was it seems to me like it was a challenge you know it was and um i was i was palpably scared literally it's like that yeah. first couple songs that day i was i was shaking i was scared i was like okay i just have to keep reminding myself that this goes really badly nobody will ever hear it don't worry like it's not yeah, right? passing to the world right now just, well it was a great call Good, thank you. It's a great call because no one's ever done that with him. And I think he's underrated art artistically uh, in his depth. And as I mentioned before, his, his singing um, because of this outlaw moniker, you know, um, it's, it's, it's more shallow than the guy really 
is in yeah, West. Yeah, and I felt like, you know, Johnny Cash and, and Willie Nelson and, and Chris Christopherson, those guys all lived longer, and they kind of got to do 60 through 80. You know what I mean? They got to, they got another 20 years, and so they really got to kind of be reinvented and re re-examined and, and they all like made the cut and to this really interesting time that we now live in. So, but how have you, um, what have you been doing through COVID? How, how did you get through this? How did you get through 2020? How, yeah, well, uh, I've gotten through it. Pardon me? You're still here, so. We're I'm still here and, and loss of income. Oh yeah. A lot of fear, a lot of fear about that. So there's that. And, and so I would find myself being sad, sometimes irritable, um, you know, just all these stages of like, and then you go into denial or you can't even get through the day, you know, right. so you go into a form of denial. But um, the good things that have happened um, for me, I haven't been home this much in decades. Right decades <laughs> this is crazy i've been home since march you know um and i'm writing um yeah. i'm you know i have this very solid routine going i'm writing i think that's the biggest you know I don't write on the road. The road is just, the older I get, it just consumes more and more energy, which is not to say I don't like it. I mean, I did, I have found myself being stir crazy and missing it, you know, as, yeah. as nice as it's been to have a break. You're rested. I'm rested. I get, you know, consistent exercise. Um, I, I don't eat pizza at midnight on the bus, you know, um, <laughs> stuff like that. But mostly Shannon, I'm, being creative yes and that's a gift and a half we didn't start at exactly the same time but we sort of came through a big swath of time together here so yeah before instagram and facebook and all the social media yeah. stuff, i mean how have you found that does that how do you find dealing with it you're pretty active on it you know you seem to have made that you know switch into it like i know for some artists they're just like no I'm not doing it. Here's what I did. I shoot Twitter and Facebook. I like Instagram. They're all connected. If I post something on Instagram, it goes to all the other. But I don't, that's the only one I look at. Yeah. And that's only, you know, I like the, the, the visual. Yeah. I like that everything is, is, so is a visual. Yeah. Yes. But you can still excuse me, you can still write as much as you want. And um, I like being able to do these little videos for, for Instagram. So that's how I follow people. And that's the one I stick with. Yeah. If I were thinking about Twitter and Facebook and, and any of the others all the time, I think I'd lose my mind. So we had to make this shift, you know, just like, and we did. We did. We had to do it. And it was remarkably hard. And I sort of felt like it all feels like the old West to me, you know, what I imagine the old West, but these, these, yeah. when, when these paradigm shifts happen and we're right in the middle of one. So I've tried to stay positive and creative. Like, okay, this is all one big yoga practice. And I watch, I have a 12 year old, you know, so I watch her just sail through everything just like but she doesn't have any of this baggage you know what i mean she's not yeah. resentful of change she doesn't know anything right. it's all just one new thing to learn so i thought i'm gonna try and do that take a page from that book yeah all right well sean this has been really 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 nice and i am very honored that you took time out of your day to uh hang out with me here and talk about Waylon and talk about your process um and uh i really this is fantastic thank you very much thank you shannon it's been a pleasure and and great project great job and a lot of food for thought and wonderful doing these interviews too to talk to talk about it it it's, um opens up a lot of fodder for a lot of things and you know all that aside, Waylon, incredible artist, and good for you. All right.
Well, thank you very much.